today, we would have never had that inception for inside Australia. That's right. So we really want to thank you guys for coming out. Thank you. Yeah. Now, I'm going to give you guys a quick free space. Maria is the only person that can really attest to this. I met her a year ago back in the Simbers. And by show of hands, how many of you guys have gone through some sort of transition, change, or anything within the last 10 years? <laughs> <laughs> So he excelled. And when he reached high school, he was a part of a program that allowed him to excel even more. And the model of this program was this. Give a man a fish, and he will eat for a day. But you teach a man a fish, and he will eat for a lifetime. And I thought about this. I love this so much. I wrote it on the notebook. He wrote it on his, like, you know, on his silver when he went home. He loved it so much because it, 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 it described bounty. It described abundance. Something that he was not used to other than receiving abundance amount of love. But then one day he sat down and he actually started to think about it more and more and more. How does this correlate to me, my situation, my circumstances, but not only that, how does it correlate to where I'm at, my surroundings? That's what the young man and the young boy asked himself. Chicago, Illinois. This young man wanted so badly to get out of this. But so many people around him, that's the only thing that they knew. Why am I going to worry about abundance and changing my life when I have to worry about securing my life and just getting to see the next day. That's the reality of so many people that live near this neighborhood. But I'll remind you guys, this young man was loved. And his mom and his dad and his sister, they believed in his dreams. So they said, little brother, little son, you go out there and you make your dreams come true. So this brings this up even more. He decided to take the road less traveled. Now one thing you guys may see from this is empty. A lot of people are not willing to put in the work. A lot of people don't get this far because they lack the love and the support. And 
company. It's a long fucking journey to those mountains up there. <laughs> Excuse my language, but it's a long, long way for you to get to those mountains. And when it's even more daunting at times, you still think to yourself, I still have to get to the summit. If the road itself to the mountains is not scary and daunting enough, I still have to get to the top. And that scares the living crap out of so many people. But he wanted to be different. So he sought the masters, he sought the mentors, his muses, and he learned the art of writing, he learned the art of storytelling, he learned the art of so many things. But one thing rang up. If you guys remember the picture that I showed you of Chicago, Illinois, that was still part of his story, part of his reality. So many people back there said, you're changing. Who do you think you are? Oh, you think you're too good for us. <laughs> So a big battle began to rank up inside of him, a conflict out of this world. Because he saw himself going this way, and of course other people were going this way, but they want him to go this way with them. And so as I said, the conflict just continued and continued, continued, continued. So this young man learned how to bullshit. Some people call it this young man learned how to bullshit, he bullshit very well for many years. And once again, we can say he accepted. And then, 2009, there was a business incubator program at his university. Without a doubt, he knew he was a shoe in. One, there's a two part series you have the written application, and you have the face to face application. The written application, the guys were writing for years, he was like, I got this. The very well application is like face to face, charisma, feet the pool. I got this. <laughs> he knew that he was an absolute shoe. So he was cut up, like, you know, very clean cut, had a very nice press suit, walked in as confident and as maybe cocky as ever. And he sat down with the interviewer. Let's call the professor Michael. And so the first question was asked. And he answered the first question. The second question was asked, and he answered the second question just as fast, if not faster, than the first question. He was doing a great job. He thought he was doing an excellent job. And then the third, the fourth, the fifth, and the sixth questions were asked. And he still thought he just did an amazing job. Until the interview came to a halt. And the professor says this to the young man. Alex, without a doubt, you're one of our best advisors. You have so much potential. But I'm not going to accept you into this program. Something wasn't that enough for me. I took a like, step back and I started thinking to myself, okay, he just said I was one of the best advisors. I got a lot of potential. I'm a shoo-in, right? Why am I not in this program? Why am I not being accepted? And he must have heard me thinking out loud. Maybe I was speaking out loud or thinking out loud. But he answered the question for me. He says, because you have so much potential, and allow me to take a step back. I understand, he said to me, that the cooperative sort of nature of student and professor is for me to spit exactly what I think the professor wants to hear out in order for me to excel and make grades. We go back to the essences. And so he said that to me. He's like, Alex? I think you said exactly what you thought I wanted to hear. And I understand that in the educational system, that's acceptable. But because I recognize your potential, I want you to go out. I want you to find your own voice. So let's be honest. I was pissed. I was disgusted. I didn't like where I was at. I didn't like him. I thought we had a good working relationship. I thought we were, you know, about to do some magical stuff. Because this program, I kid you not, 14 to 16 hour days with six different companies for one month straight. That was the business incubator program. Had to get that sort of experience out and a part of my history. But it didn't happen because he didn't feel that I found my voice yet. But you know what? He gave me the blessing of saying, I want you to. He recognized that potential within me, just like we saw the potential in you guys. We wouldn't have went to Alton as fast if there was no potential within us. It's potential.
picture that's already, you know, a lot of us are seeing the fruits of our labor. And it's fantastic. So I thought about this. What does finding your voice mean? I like to think about fair hands for my own. And I realized something for myself. It's not about me finding my voice. It's about me creating my stories, I have many experiences, I have many moments of my life that are defining and they translate into this comprehensive culmination of a being that you see in front of you right now. And so part of that, as some of you guys may know, I created a website. One Life Moment. And this website is a community of shared ideas, inspired writers, perspectives. I like to consider it to be ideas worth living. And the reason I created this website is because there's so many people throughout this world that feel that there's no one there to listen. There's so many people in this world that feel that they don't have a voice. I created this website to inspire the little boys and the little girls back in Chicago. Do I know if it's going to get any down the road? Well, sure. And I created this website for people like you and me because I understand the power of storytelling. Can I, can I get an amen? <laughs> <laughs> There's stories that have the power to make us nearly crack our hands from life. <laughs> and then their stories that change our lives forever. And for me, that was the parable, the parable of fishing. You give me a fish for a day, I'm just going to eat for one day, and that's it. Some people have to survive in that, that circumstance for some people in their life. But I was blessed to learn how to fish. So do you know what that equals? That equals blessings. That equals abundance. That equals gifts and experiences. Just like my voice has evolved, my story has evolved. And the same thing goes for each and every single one of you guys. Your experiences, your stories, and your moments, if you want to break it down to that very, very small middle level, makes you who you are at this very present time. And so I created the community I feel that each and every one of us has a story. We don't necessarily need to listen to the celebrities and the stars for advice and for storytelling. We were all born. 